Hi everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Had an interesting question recently on the Enterprise DNA support forum that I thought should um, deserved a deeper dive with a tutorial. Now, basically, the essence of this one is that uh, this this particular person needed to work out what the cumulative year to date was, but also the monthly average year to date. Okay, and so. What you have is you obviously have, and, and there's another nuance to this. The other nuance was that in the particular table, they wanted the year and the month, okay? I'm gonna show you the setup in a second, but I just wanna give you an overview of you know what this actually is. So obviously creating a cumulative year to date is not too difficult, right? I've, I've covered this before. You can use the cumulative total pad. You can also use the year to date. Um, you use the total year to date uh, time intelligence function. But what if you want to work out what the average is year to date, right? So obviously you've got a cumulative amount, as you can see down here. You can see, um, sorry, the year to date total is here. So you see here um, in this particular example from the support form. But we, what we want to do is we want to work out, okay, what, what would be the cumulative average? So what is the average of 156, right? Well, it's 78. And then what is the average of three months um, at 161, well, it's 53.67. This is what we need to try and work out in our, in our data set, the formula that we need um, to be able to do this. So this was worked out um, by one of the uh, enterprise DNA experts, and I'm just breaking it down into in a tutorial around how we can actually do this in Power BI, the actual formulas that you are required to do. Okay, now the one key thing here to, to, to realize is that a lot of this depends on the context in which you want to showcase this information, okay? Now, in this example, it is year in, in, a, um, in a table and month, right? Okay? So you can turn this into a visualization eventually, but as I always say, make sure you put things into tables first because uh, it's so much easier to see the results and see the information, okay? Now, uh, let's, let's just walk through some of the, each individual formula so we can see how this has worked out, okay? Now, total revenue, really simple, right? It's just a very simple formula, um, you know, simple aggregation formula using sum, okay? Then we have the year-to-date revenue. Uh, all we have to do here, simple time intelligence function. Time intelligence functions do all the hard work for you, okay? So all we have to do here is input total revenue measure, we're branching out, and then the dates column. Then we create another formula called monthly average year. Okay, this is quite interesting. So what we are going to do is we are going to calculate on um, each different month the average. Okay, uh, and and what what I've done here is this, and we used average dex, and inside of average dex I've put a virtual table to iterate through because that's what happens inside of these iterating functions like average dex, right? And we're going to iterate through every single month and year. Okay. And at every single month and year in this virtual table, we're going to calculate the total revenue, but then average it up, okay? Now, to then work out this final result, this is where it comes in a little bit trickier. Well, first of all, actually, let's, let's have a look at what this monthly average returns at every single row here. You'll notice that every single row here, it actually returns the exact amount of total revenue. Now the reason that is, is because this particular part of the virtual table, uh, this vi virtual table, sorry, we've put inside of average X, is actually working out to only one month at every single row here. So it doesn't actually have the opportunity to iterate through the months that we need to average up. Okay, and um, and for that very re and for that and and what comes out of that, right, is that we um, actually get exactly the same result here because we're only averaging one month. But this is very important as soon as we put it into this particular formula here to get this year-to-date monthly average. And so you'll see here that we start we start off as this, the same amount, you know, for total revenue and also the cumulative total we have there. But then it, it changes as we go through time because of um, the averaging that we are doing based off this cumulative total um, or year-to-date column, basically. Okay? Now, I, mean, I guess basically what it's doing in, in theory is at every single row here, it's going and looking back through every single month prior to that month, including that month, and then averaging all of those out. And that's giving us the um, ongoing average or basically like the rolling average if you think about it in that way.
Okay, so this is the formula that's been used. Now, this is slightly different to other formulas you can use for like a rolling average, mainly because of the um, because of the context in which we have in this in this particular table, right? And so what we want to do is we want to calculate up the monthly average. So we want to calculate up this result here, but we want to do it in a different context, right? So remember the context here is March 2018. Well, we actually want the context for this particular result to be all of these three months here in 2018, January, February, and March, okay? And this particular filter function with its the, the relevant parameters allows us to do that, okay? So we remove all, at every single row here, we remove all context from dates, and then we reapply it. We say, um, if the month of year is less than or equal to the max month of year, so for this particular result here, the max month of year is three. So if it is less than three, so one, two, three, and it equals the same year, so 2018, um, which it will for all of the results in this particular table because of what we have in the slicer, then go and work out the monthly average, go and iterate through those three months and then average them up. And that's how we get that, that uh, basically like that, that rolling average or that year-to-date monthly average um, for our particular revenue results in this case. But you could use, this could be, obviously you could apply any initial measure in here. It doesn't have to be revenue. It could be quantity sold. It could be cost. It could be, it could be anything. So pretty interesting scenario that uh, I think was solved very well in the support forum and I thought definitely deserved a video to expand on that, right? And, um, and look, and this is a very common this is a very common requirement. I guess the, the, the unique thing here was the context which is in the table. And you see how um, when you just slowly start with a simple measure and then branch out one by one by one, it becomes a lot easier to, um, to understand what's actually going on there. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap things up there. Um, hopefully you can utilize this technique. Um, you, you can actually go and search for this inside the forum if you just want to copy and paste the um, particular technique or the, or the formula. Got it all set up nicely there for you. Um, but yeah, definitely throw the video a like if um, you benefited from this and, and can use, and are able to utilize this technique. And don't forget to subscribe also to Enterprise DNA TV and uh, look forward to getting some more content out to you shortly. All the best.